All right, guys, pull up a chair. As you can tell by the title, we are talking about being a correctional officer. So I am actually outside. I do not want to be inside because there's going to be a lot of <laughs> interruptions if I do. Um, so we're out back. I am staying warm. And I kind of just want to start over. Every time I watch my CO videos, I kind of hate the way I talk. I seem very energetic about a job that is all right, okay? It's not like the best job to have in the world, obviously. Um, I'm basically just gonna start over and kind of keep at this. So if you have any questions regarding being a correctional officer, con games, manipulation, things like that, comment something down below and I'll be sure to answer them in the next video. But let me just get into this. So first and foremost, my name is Gabriella. I live in Central Texas. I have worked at TDCJ the Texas Department of Criminal Justice as a correctional officer for about three and a half years. I started October 28th of 2016. The only reason why I remember that date is just because I had my daughter the night before and ended up having to go in the next day for the agility test at like eight o'clock in the morning. I'm going to just kind of let you guys know I am thinking about going back as a correctional officer temporarily. Honestly, like every time I have to reapply for this job, I get a little nervous because this is not a job I want to do. And it's not, and I say this many times in my, in my videos, talking about correctional officer, being a correctional officer. But the thing is, is like, this is where I want to start over because I know with some of the things I say, it comes off a little contradicting. I say this job is not for everyone, but anyone can pretty much do it, okay? Um, I wanna kind of put a line through that and let you guys know that yes, this job is not made for anyone. If you suffer with depression, anxiety, PTSD, if you suffer for any type of like mental illness, it's probably not a good job for you. If you don't do well with confrontation, if, I'm not saying be a biatch in a way of, you know, you have to always be like that. But one of the things that, you know, not only in TDCJ do they teach, but in a lot of other jobs is firm, fair, and consistent. Those are the three things that they really try to push on you when you become a TDCJ officer or a correctional officer. I don't know why I'm so twisted right now, but um, you guys get the gist of what I'm trying to say. So back to my experience, I worked at Mountain View. That's where I first started out off as a correctional officer. I have explained many times, I do not like this unit. It's just my personal gimmick to it. I don't like, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and give you the reasons. I'm not trying to down the unit. There's nothing wrong with the unit itself. I promise you that. It's just supervisors and favoritism is a really big thing. Um, and you know, I'm gonna be real, before I started this job, I was so shy, timid, gullible, and people ran all over me, you know? Um, I was one of those people. I just feel like this job, even though I know it was not for me, it really helped me grow as someone who could really stand up for herself. and. That already is just like, I'm thankful that I have experienced this job for that reason. I'm not saying like I'm a biatch or I'm like a hard ass outside in the free world, but like, it's just, a, it's something good to have when you do have to happen to deal with a bunch of Karens or whatever the case is. So yeah, I started off at Mountain View. I worked there for eight months. And, you know, I asked my HR if I could, like, transfer because Mountain View has a sister unit, Hilltop. I did end up working there, but we're not going to go that far yet. Um, I ended up, you know, speaking with my HR and wanting to do a transfer because I was just not liking this job. Um, I, and even when I did start this job, I did not know much about this job. As much as we did OJT, there was not a lot of learning. It was just watching somebody do something and that was basically it. I guess I'm just trying to tell y'all everything. But anyways, yeah, so they could not transfer me. They said it was gonna take about five, six, eight months because you're gonna be on a list. I said, screw that. So I, I really started getting, I really started becoming depressed with having to get up and go to work to Mountain View. I really just, it was, it was just the unit. It was not the unit, it wasn't the offenders, it was the supervisors. But um, yeah, I called out and I told my lieutenant, like I don't have a babysitter. She said, okay, well you're still gonna have to come into work because that's not a good enough excuse. 
And I said, did you not hear me? I do not have a babysitter. My son is two. He cannot watch his eight month old sister, let alone watch himself. Here I ended up cussing her out. Um, I did not go into work that night, obviously, but the next day I did go into work. The next night I did go into work and she put me on patrol. I've never in my entire eight months being there been put on patrol, which is basically driving the vehicle around, you know, and doing your rounds there. That was the most boring job ever. And I wanted to see if someone would trade with me, but my, cause you're allowed to do that in some instances, you can ask your Lieutenant, Hey, can we switch this and this and this? I had someone that was willing to switch with me because she did not mind doing patrol and I did not mind doing dorms at the time. I got so used to dorms, I was okay with dorms. So point moral of the story is my lieutenant, the one I cussed out, did not let me switch. I was like, great, I'm not wanting to learn this because I know I'll never be doing this. I never, I know I don't want to do this. So anyways, I swear I wanted to quit right then and there because she wouldn't let me switch. It's kind of petty, I know, whatever. So she, so yeah, I did my patrols. That following day I quit. I refused to go to work. Um, I quit, turned in my stuff. That was it. About three months later, I decided to sign back up for TDCJ and I went to the Hilltop unit, which is the sister unit, which I mentioned earlier. I went to the sister unit, love that unit. Um, now when I started my pro my process and getting hired and stuff like that, um, I did not have to do the academy, I just joined with OJT. And a lot of the OJT people, um, they were pretty new and I already pretty much knew what was expected and all of that. So pretty much my OJT instructor, she let me and another individual who actually went into training uh, the academy with me my first time, she was there too. We were kind of like, the leaders in kind of explaining what's going on, you know? Um, I'm not gonna sit here and say I was the best. I was there to learn more stuff too. And I told my instructor that, look, like I know what to do. It's just a matter of, I just need more, I just have more questions because um, if something's asked of me to do it like this, is it okay to do it like this? Or blah, 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 blah. You know, whatever the situation is. Uh, but it felt really good that there were people looking up to me and this other person and asking questions if our instructor wasn't available at that time or whatever it is. You know, I ended up, like I said, I love, love, love Hilltop. The only downer to it was whenever we got out of OJT, well, actually, not only that, being in OJT, we also had to learn about Mountain View, which I already knew everything about Mountain View. Um, I knew where everything was, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so once we started getting out of OJT and we were actually on the clock, we were actually on our own at this point, I, um, it seemed like every week, um, if Mountain, Mountain View always needs people, Mountain View always needs people because nobody shows up for work at Mountain View. It's ridiculously crazy how many people we're missing. So, because we don't have enough officers at Mountain View, they send a lot of the Hilltop officers over there. And because one of the lieutenant lieutenants who was originally from Mountain View transferred to Hilltop, she knew that I worked, used to work at Mountain View, so she always used me and had me work my shift at Mountain View, which I was like, crap, I'm trying to avoid Mountain View, which I guess I'm the idiot because I should have known that this was gonna happen. They're sister units, and if one place needs more officers, they're gonna send you over there. So it seemed like every time I got sent over there, and it was just kind of like a drag. Not only that, a situation, like it just seems like it's something with my kids. I had a babysitter, and she, I guess she had a boyfriend at the time. She never introduced me to this boyfriend who was gonna be you know, they're both gonna be watching my kids for those eight or 16 hours if I'm doing overtime. It, it is just crazy ridiculous that, you know, I, my kids started acting very weird. They started doing things in sexual manners. I've never taught my children these things. They're only three and four. Well, at the time they were two and three. Um, and she, you know, swore up and down that they weren't doing anything, but I used to drop them off and witness her lay my daughter next to this half-naked man who's only in his boxers. And I had such a big issue with this that 
I did not even pay her for that month. I said, screw you, walked away. And I took them to the emergency room and wanted to get them checked because like I said, they were doing very weird things, not with each other, but to themselves. Working for Hilltop, I ended up having to see my warden because I was missing so many days. Um, and I'm gonna be honest and real with you guys, I cussed my warden out because she did not understand. She was she was like the temp, she was a temporary um, warden. Um, she's never been a correctional, she was never a correctional officer. She was an HR and then she got moved up to being a warden. I don't know how, in my personal opinion, I feel like a warden needs to have experience as a CO before they can tell me anything, okay? So this is the thing. Oh no, it was not because I was missing days. It's because I was refusing mandatory overtime. That's why I had to see the warden. So I had to see her one morning. Me and like two other officers, we had to go see her because we were not really going through the same situation, but different unique situations that involved us having to go to court with our warden. So I went in to talk to the warden and she did this whole court spiel thing, like whatever, I solemnly swear to tell the truth, blah, blah, blah. And she, you know, I gave her my reasoning. You know, before even going to court, I had to write down the reasons why I could not do mandatory overtime, at, at least at that specific time. You know, um, the great thing about Hilltop was though, like with mandatory overtime, they gave you the option to either work four hours extra or eight hours. It was not like a, you have to work eight hours extra, you know, like not everybody can do that. And Hilltop was really good at asking you four hours or eight. You know, I was really good at, yeah, I'll do four hours. I can do that. That's fine. But eight hours, I cannot, you know, and let alone they don't even give you time to like, if you do accept overtime or they tell you you have mandatory overtime, they don't give you the time to go and call home and let, you know, whoever's watching your kids or whoever your spouse or whatever, they don't let you know. They don't give you a chance to, you know, call your family and let them know, hey, I'm going to be an overtime. So, um, you know, I always work my four hours back to the warden thing. I'm sorry, guys. I'm so all over the place, but I hope you listen anyways. Um, so my warden, she first wants to throw out, you know, I gave her my reasoning. I thought, I thought my kids were being touched, sexually assaulted, things in that nature, blah, blah, blah. She wanted to know where my husband was at the time. I was not in a relationship with anybody. And then she throws out there, look, I've been a single mom before, but TDCJ comes first. TDCJ comes first always. And that's where I stopped here. Right there when she said that instantly ticked me off because I understand TDCJ should be another part of my family, but my family, my family comes first always. So I stopped her right there. Cause I'm not gonna lie. When she was reading everything to me, like my kids are being sexually assaulted. She was asking me all these personal questions. I was like, I was crying. I was crying because like it's hard to talk about something that happened to your kids and then someone not understanding that like it's hard already to get a babysitter that you can trust and not like kidnap your kid or something like that because this world is just crazy now. Like I know my babies are beautiful. I know they're freaking smart. I know that they are well trained. I know that and others know that too, which is why it was already hard to find a babysitter to trust, <laughs> you know? Um, let alone be cheap for a price I was looking for. So this warden has the decency to tell me, look, I've been a single mom before. Um, it's hard, it's rough. Yeah, we know that. I'm a single mom. Well, at the time I was a single mom. I know that, tell me something interesting. Well, why aren't you do, why aren't you, you know, we're family, you're, you know, mandatory comes first. I said, look, these, this, my family comes first. Do you understand the, seriousness behind a sexual assault on a child two children let alone i don't know if you guys know this has happened to me i was sexually assaulted by my babysitter when i was three years old and my parents found out in a restaurant and i told them that it hurt to pee this 15 year old kid son had beaten me black and blue had did things to me internally so yeah like this took a very negative effect on me extremely and the last thing i wanted was it to happen again with my children i did not want that um 
So she, we got down to whatever, and she's just like, why aren't you showing up for mandatory shit? And I turned around and said, why is it you have all these people who wanted first shift and can't show up for their shift? Because every day I'm being called to do mandatory overtime. I get it, it's extra money or it's extra time in my books. But at the end of the day, money is money, money comes and goes. Like, I, I don't know how else anyone else feels about this. You can think wrong of me, you can think right of me, but this is this is the actual, like, you're pissing me off, Warden. Because this Warden, like I said, she ticked me off. She just ticked me off. But she didn't suspend me without pay or anything like that, but I was no longer allowed to miss work unless I came in with a doctor's note, which was fine. Um, and then, like, even after having that meeting with her and going and going into work that next night or that following night, that same day night, I was like, what am I doing here? You know, what am I doing here? This place does not care about me. I'm just a body babysitting for them while they get to sit in their freaking rooms and do some paperwork and eat all freaking night. What is it that I am doing here when they can't even do their jobs right? They can't get their people to come in for work. Guys, believe me when I say this. When you are trying to get your shift, whether it's first, second, or third shift, if you're working an eight-hour unit, if you're working an eight-hour unit, you got three shifts. First, second, third. First shift is morning. First shift is 5.45 to like 2.30. Second shift is 2.30 to like 10 o'clock. Night shift is 10.30 to 6 o'clock in the morning, basically. So it all goes within itself, right? Lots of people don't want night shift. Actually, I love night shift, don't get me wrong. If I sleep during the day, I'm fine. But lots of people go for first shift. First shift is the shift that everybody wants. Why is it I'm having to every day, almost every day, during my, just my one cycle, am doing a shift for first shift? Because they wanted that shift. I didn't want that shift. I got third shift, the shift that I wanted. I told my ward in this. Why is it that I'm getting in trouble for not doing somebody else's shift? I understand every once in a while, but not all the time. This is an every day, every night thing. And every night I have turned down mandatory overtime. I know it's mandatory and I can get wrote up for it. That's fine. I understand. Write me up for it. Because there's things that needs to be taken care of. And... It, and they, it needs to be better suited for the officers who actually come in, do their job 100% to the best of their ability, and leave. I don't even know what this video is about, guys. Why am I making this video? What is this video even about? I'm just a little, like, ticked off. Like, that's why I really don't want to go to TVCJ because, like, I'm going to have to deal with all this crap again anyways. And it's not going to be like the child care that's going to bother me any at this point. I have someone that can watch my children on an everyday basis if I need them to. It's just um, right now I just have to get my car and stuff and get a new license. I'm way past my freaking expiration date. Um, my birthday was in July and we're already in December. So, <laughs> um, yeah, my thing expired on my birthday. So. Yeah, there's just a lot of things I gotta do before I even think about going to that job, but until then, I'm chill with being a stay-at-home YouTuber. Yeah.